are fusion high. Fusion fam, what's up? What's going on? What's going on, y'all? Oh, oh my gosh. We have the most specialist, the special, special guest. Oh my ever. god. I prepared a little intro for you. Are you ready? Uh, oh, you, yeah, you, you have an intro? Is it okay if I do it for you? Yeah, 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 yeah of All course. Right. Yeah, can we give the mic? Yeah, 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 use the mic oh, for yeah. you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. this man has been in Rick and Morty, oh, yeah. Night Court, True. the Patrick Star Show, True. Invincible, yeah. The Neighborhood, yeah. what? Reno 911, yeah. Robot Chicken, oh, yeah. Dr. McStuffin, oh, yeah. sure. Undercover Brother, yeah. and What's Undercover Brother? Yep. Uh-oh. Smart yeah. Brother. Yeah. And yeah. the Boondocks. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Oh, and who's lying in the anyone? Who's lying? You say that right? Yep. Yep. Welcome in the middle, all right, my baby. Welcome in the middle, all right. And we have Gary Anthony Williams. Oh, the what? Comic Conroe. Ah, what a God. joy for y'all. Uh, it, it, you're absolutely right. You about, <laughs> this is about to be the best show you two have ever done. Oh, my, that is what uh, we like true. to hear. No, we know it's true. Yeah, 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 this know. is about, this is the one. This, this is the one that's going to change everything for you. Oh, my gosh. Well, this hey. is going to make y'all, what's that guy who uh, interviewed Cat Williams? Oh, 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 oh this is not like Shannon Sharp. Oh, People going to say, who is Shannon who? Yeah. After this. <laughs> They're going to be Fusion <laughs> High. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if y'all don't know who we are, I'm Chad. And I'm Jim. And together, this podcast, you know this tag team, you know this collective yeah. These right. Comic Con conquerors, these Thanks. gaming gods, mm. we are Fusion High! <laughs> Bam! Oh, man. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, we're just a little extra, just a little bit. Yeah, put some sauce on it, man. No, you, you have to. So, Gary, first and foremost, yeah. thank you for doing this for us. Oh, my really, pleasure. really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. We're both really big fans of your work, so thank you. thank you. Thank you. So, if you could, just introduce yourself to the people, just kind of tell them, you know, tell them a bit about yourself. Hey, Gary Anthony Williams, I have done a bunch of the stuff they said, and some other stuff too. I'm from the South. I grew up in Fayetteville, Georgia. Oh. Uh, moved to LA uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, something years old, 30 something years old, and started working there doing the stuff I love, man. I, okay. I think that the most I can say about myself is I get to do every day something I love. Oh, man. That's yeah, that's man. my pleasure. That's my joy right there. Yeah. A lot of people don't get to say that, so that's... No, but you can say it. You can lie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or, or you could be doing something. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What was the first thing that you've uh, you done, you know, in acting, voice acting? In, in L.A., the first thing I did voice act. Actually, I think the first thing I did in L.A. voice acting was a movie with me and Wayne Brady called Trumpet of the Swan that nobody Trumpet probably... Trumpet of the Swan? Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. <laughs> what was nobody, that about? Nobody saw it. Uh, 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 Swan uh, Trumpeting. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> grand opening, grand closing, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Trying with Swan Trumpeting. Uh, Swan Trumpeting. Uh, that, that may have been the first one I did in L.A. Okay. Um, the first one I ever did, job I ever did, was a commercial for Chicago, doing a rap. Doing a rap for it. Uh, I think it was like WGN or WGNO in Chicago. Ah, so you got bars, huh? Yeah, I am a freestyle rapist. Oh, okay. Oh, I am. Okay. Y'all never saw, if you want to Google Uncle Ruckus uh, Snoop Dogg, you will see me dressed as Uncle Ruckus okay. doing a rap battle with, uh, with uh, Snoop Dogg. Oh my God! We are looking yeah. that up immediately. Yep, yeah, got to. I think I was doing that now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it is real. It is. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that's real. That's real. That's <laughs> real, there. So, is was there any moment like in your childhood that kind of led you to what you're doing? No, right now? no, absolutely not. Really? I grew up. I had six sisters, two brothers. We were poor as poor could be. Okay. I never even imagined. Oh, you can make a living making sounds with your voice and, you know talking you can make throat money you know how you always talking about making money with your throat yeah. I never I never even throat money he calls me about that all the time hey man 
I'm about to go out and make some money, some of this throw money. He's hey. All the time calling me you about bring that. the throw money back home to the Wait, podcast, oh, brother. Whoa, good <laughs> no, so no, I never, I never even considered acting or voice acting. I was in uh, in high school. I was very smart and pretty lazy, and uh, I was looking for a class just to burn some hours, you know, mm-hmm. hours on. And I signed up for a class, but the computer put me in an acting class. Oh. And by mistake. It was like just a straight-up computer error for real. So I got in there, and then, then I was like, oh, this is fun and dumb. And that's how, that's how I got into acting, like a, a computer error. Ah, okay. Yeah. Man, happy accident. So, oh, go ahead, bro. So, uh, you know, the first thing I ever seen you in was Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, yeah. Malcolm in the Middle was the second TV show I did once I moved to L.A. Really? The first one was the Amanda show. The Amanda? Oh, you, the judge, right? I was, I was the, uh, oh. the bailiff to the judge. Bailiff, the bailiff, yes. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. But you so, still out on the Malcolm yeah. Middle, man. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, Malcolm, so I went in to audition for Malcolm in the Middle. Right. But I went into audition for like a one-time role, like a bathroom attendant or something. Right. And then they didn't hire me. They was like, they didn't hire you, but there's a little kid on the show and they need a father for him. So they want to bring you back to audition for that. Okay. So then that's when that happened. So even with Malcolm, like the thing I went in to get, mm-hmm. I didn't even get that thing. Yeah. I got something better in the yeah. long run. Yeah. But uh, but that's kind of like this business. Like I don't worry about, oh, man, I didn't get this. I didn't get that. Like, no, no. But it's the stuff that I do get and the fun I do yeah. get to have that you know, I concentrate on. Yeah. We've interviewed several people and always, that always seems to be kind of a constant where you guys are going for one role. And you yeah. may not get that role, but you always come out with something better. Well, not always. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but I will also I will wrestle for a role I'll fight for a role Okay uh, Yeah uh, I do a lot of uh, Uh you don't know what shinjitsu is, but it's the art of fighting uh, with your uh, from the knees down, using only your shins. Oh. Fighting from the leg, I will shinjitsu oh, you for a roll. Uh, <laughs> Top people still think you hit yeah. your shins. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but no, no, no arms. The art of fighting from the knees down, using only the knees down. Oh man, <laughs> I will shinjitsu you for for this microphone. Yeah, oh, I'm going to shinjitsu both of them for the camera and go. the microphone <laughs> after this. After, no, I want it honorably. I want to win it on yeah. <laughs> I'm mad at that. Okay. Got to do, man? man, so you know we we know you and love you from being Uncle Rucker. Oh, Uncle uh, and I, I, I gotta tell you right now, it is very it's very sad for me now to be the beautiful meat in between this Negro slice of the bread. Right now. <laughs> to be to be the meat in, in a colored sandwich is very disturbing to me. We're right like now. legit Oreo right now. I I I I I, 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 I can't say you legit about a damn thing. <laughs> I can't say that. Because I'm sure I, 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 I'm sure I'll leave this interview without my wallet. That is a damn fact. <laughs> but it is very disturbing to me. If, if there's nothing more disturbing to my ears than Negroes in stereo. <laughs> there's stereo Negroes right here coming out. Jabba, jabba, jabba on that side. Jungle music on that side. Nothing more disturbing. Oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> Uncle Ruckus is yeah. oh, wow. 100% my favorite character yeah. that I... I, on, on in cartoons yeah. that I've ever had. Now the you answered one to of my other questions I was going to ask. So that's one hundred percent. So first, how did you get the role on the book? Shinjitsu. The book? No. Shinjitsu. No, no. So you Shinjutsu someone? Out of that I can't role? remember if it was Shinjitsu. I slept around for one day. No. Uh, so <laughs> I, I get it be, before oh. before you got to get it how you can. Uh, I used to read the Boondock in the newspaper okay and before it was a TV show and I had all the books the okay. comic books of it oh, wow. and then my agent called and said hey there's this thing called the boondocks it's like know it well yep. it's like they're having a they're doing a TV show and I said I want to audition for every male part so I went in I auditioned for Huey Riley Granddad Tom and then after I finished all that they were like oh there's a new character he's going to introduce on the TV show called Uncle Ruckus and then they described it to me yeah. and then uh, that was it you know yeah. I just I'm from the south so I just recall some of my <laughs> oh lord that lazy ass folks who used to hang around my daddy all the time 
<laughs> Willie, wh- wh- how come you ain't drinking no more? Why you don't drink liquor no more, Willie? And so they used to come around. So it was like some... It sounds just like that? Yeah. But they had different sounds, but I just made sure they like keep them at all oh, this here, right here. Like, I ain't got time to move fast for a damn thing. That's just a white man, and I'll move fast for him. Yeah. So I just took some of those emotions damn. from some of the people from the past from where I, you know, grew up as a little boy. Boy, you know. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know you did like half this stuff. Like I'm like looking at it like, dude, you been actually all the pictures I have on the table today, Phil Lamar did, but I decided I would pretend hey, I did. Hey man, that's a good I pretended I did. <laughs> I also learned how to sign his autograph. Oh man. So I get I get at least seven eighths of his checks. Yeah, no, man, no. No, dude, I got I get I seriously get a chance to play, like I said, all the time. So a lot of video game stuff, a lot of stuff. I love for like little kids, you know, like uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur and Haley's on it. Yeah. And then, you know, some grown folk stuff too, like Boondocks and, you know, yeah. like I get a chance to do a lot of, I, yeah. I get a lot of variety in life. Yeah. So the touchback on the Boondocks. So you work with a lot of talented people. Yeah. John Witherspoon, Regina Hall. Man, yeah. Uh, that, Regina King. Regina King, I'm sorry. Yeah, Regina I refuse King. to work yeah. with Regina Hall. Oh. If she calls me to oh. work, I will not work with Regina Hall. Oh, well, Regina if I see her walking down the street and she tries to hand me a million dollar bill, I will refuse to get that money from Regina Ooh. Hall. Well, sorry, no more scary movies for you. I shan't, I shan't do a scary movie. I shan't be in her presence. Yes. Okay. I gotta start saying shan't more, yeah, man. Shan't, yeah, shan't. Yeah. Shan't is very shan't. eloquent, very nice. He shan't be making any more throat money. <laughs> Unless you share it with the crowd. Unless, Unless you share it with the fam. <laughs> So how was the overall vibe and atmosphere on set? The way the show sounds yeah. is how the vibe was. Man. So we would like read the script and very early on they let us know, hey, like Aaron Magruder, Rodney, like those guys just wrote ridiculously funny stuff. But they would go, if you got something better or something different, say it. Like they never made you stick to the script. Oh, Me and man. John Witherspoon would like read a scene and they would go, okay, just improvise one now. Really? Oh, it was all so much oh, improv, so much oh. great writing combined with improv because Aaron trusted us like you guys know the characters yeah. I totally trust you to do your thing wow. even the music in there yeah that first episode the garden party with don't yeah. trust those yeah. I yeah. <laughs> so we were about to do the table read uh-huh. and uh, it, in the script it just said Uncle Ruckus sings don't trust them new niggas over there and I was like oh where are the words to the song he's like we haven't written it yet we'll write it later and, uh, and he's like unless you just want to make it up what? at the oh table read I was like yeah I'm it up and so I made it up at the table read and we went in to record the show and then I was like oh so where are the new lyrics he's like oh no 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 we just wrote down what you said at the table read what? and oh so my God. Just, it when you just freestyle yeah, yeah I freestyle there you go. that's all that's, that's my thing that's what I do now. guys that's what I do guys I freestyle yeah. guys yeah. that's what I do yeah. and this is a challenge to any rapper not any there's oh, a couple yeah. I don't want to challenge I don't want to challenge uh, Lil Wayne oh yeah oh, no. and I don't want to challenge Eminem actually but uh, the dream Drakes of the world, Uh-oh. bring it. You coming for the boy? Bring it. You said the word, the boy. Yeah. Oh. Bring it, Drake. Yeah. Drake, Bring you, it. Drake, you heard it here. And I don't want none of it. I don't want none of this new freestyle of oh no, we've written some bars that we're gonna. No, 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 no. We're talking about off the dome, fresh. Ooh. Bring it, Drake. You have been challenged. You have been. Yeah. Challenged. And not just Drake. Oh, Pretty who? much anybody except Eminem and, oh, okay. and Lil Wayne. Okay. Wow. So what, what are uh, what are the differences in voice acting when it comes down to video games and uh, animation? Video games are actually tougher because video games will ruin your instrument because there's a lot of death and fighting and like give me 10 punches where you're getting hit punched in the stomach ah, you know give me three you get slapped first to the face Ah, yeah now give me some yells from getting shot you're falling off a building those are violent on yeah. your throat and they yeah. usually if you're going to do a video game you save it till Friday to see your last job of the day so okay. you also have time to heal over the weekend video games are rough on you really? yeah Man. fun yeah but rough on you really rough on you yeah so do you partake or watch any of your any like any like I usually watch stuff one like time 
I don't sit around watching my own stuff. Oh, you don't watch your own? No. Okay. I usually watch, like, I, I love Bob's Burgers, so anytime that show is on TV, I will mm-hmm. watch the heck out of it. Uh, I usually watch stuff one time just to see what it's like, and then, okay. and then I move on. I never call the neighbors up, hey, everybody, come look at me on TV. Yeah. <laughs> come look at me looking at myself on television. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have that kind of ego, man. Yeah. I watch it once and, you know, make sure it's good, make sure yeah. I don't suck. Yeah. And then, uh, then I move on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're a comedian as well for apparently being a freestyle rapper and a voice actor. I wouldn't say a comedian. Yeah, I do yeah. improv, improv comedy, though. Improv like, on comedy. whose line is so, it anyway? That okay. Sort of stuff. So how how did you get on that show? That show, man, I, question. Yeah, I, man that show is scary to me because it's like you have to do everything just off the Here is the truth head. about that show. I'm dropping truth bombs today. Uh oh. So uh, it's all written. No, it's not. No. Uh, <laughs> Industry exposed. <laughs> no. So years ago, it was a, in a show out of England. Oh. Uh, a buddy of mine named Nick Jameson. He had sent them in a tape of him doing improv, and they said, "Oh, hey, we want you to come to audition for us in New York, and also bring the black dude who was with you." And that was I was the black dude at that oh. time. Not Wayne Brady. Uh, yeah. Not Wayne Brady. <laughs> uh, so I went up and auditioned. I auditioned for that show multiple times and never got really? never got yeah. on the show. Never got. I would make it to the finals. Never got. Pretty soon I got sick of auditioning and I was like, I refused to audition again. And they was like, no, will you come and audition? Like, nope, not doing it. Forget it. Nope. Yeah. If you want to come see me live, I'm doing a show with my improv troupe, the black version, which is Phil Lamar, uh, Cedric oh. Yarbrough from Reno 911, Ooh. also Ooh. plays Stink Meaner and Tom yeah. and the Boondocks, uh, Danielle Gaither from Mad TV. Ooh. Uh, at that time, I think Key and Peel were in the group. Wow, uh, that's tough. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ooh, Danielle Gaither, yeah. Danielle Ooh. Gaither from Mad TV, uh, Naima Funk, like this uh, Jordan Black who wrote on Saturday Night Live. So I refused to audition. They came to see it, and then the next day they called and was like, "Hey, they want you to be on the show now." Wow. Like, yeah, but I was done auditioning. Like, yeah, yeah. They know what I can do <laughs> yeah. or not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not auditioning yeah. for these did you, did you white people the no more. Did you hear the names? Did you just name? Oh, I'll <laughs> drop some more. Oh <laughs> no, let, no, that. <laughs> No, that troop, that yeah, that's, that's, that's that that improv group is my favorite improv group to be. Like, I have a great group back in Atlanta, Laughing Matters, that I used mm-hmm. to perform with, and then this group, those two groups, are by far the most amazing improv. And the fact that it's an all-black improv group, uh-huh. the audience gives us a typically white movie, and then we mm-hmm. improvise the black version oh, of man. that white movie. <laughs> it's 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 dope. It's it's a great yeah. group. Yeah. Okay, man. So we've seen you interact with like like how we did today. We did a video, hilarious by the way. Oh my god, I can't stop watching it. Oh, thank so you. So we've man. seen you interact with so many people online, like on TikTok and everything. How does it feel being attached to such an iconic character, being able to make so many people laugh? I didn't. I did not. Two things made me know the power of this character. My son is a computer guy. Okay. And he doesn't watch, not in the TV and blah, blah. And one day we were talking about something and he mentions the boondocks. And I was, and he never really watches it. And he goes, you know, everybody at school knows Uncle Ruckus, right? And I was like, no, why? <laughs> why, would, why would they know that? They were all way younger. He's like, everybody knows him. <laughs> and then I, when the strike hit, I started doing conventions. And when I went to the conventions, that's when I realized the power of Wow. Of this self-hating black yeah, dude, wow. you know, it's amazing so it's to be. Only you just found this out. That, that, that that I realized like how popular he is. Yeah, oh. I had zero idea until last year when the strike hit. What was that June or whatever yeah. that was in the strike wow. hit? I had no idea how popular he was. Oh man, everybody, we love Uncle Ruckus. Uh, that, now that's what I found. Now he does not like you. Exactly. <laughs> he but, never doesn't like me. But that white woman with the purple hair over there, oh, he is loving the hell out of ever bit of her. Oh. <laughs> All the lemon juice and players she got. Oh, huh? oh yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, kind of go back to uh, Malcolm in the Middle, man. You worked with Brian Cranston. How was that, man? Like, uh, what was that experience like? First of all, from what I understand, again, that's another Hollywood thing of where they made that pilot, tried to sell it, nobody wanted that show. And then finally Fox picked it up, and then it was just a runaway success. So I, I say that to say don't listen to people. People don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. honestly, people, if somebody goes, yeah, this is your podcast, but we don't think it's going to work, don't listen to them. Keep doing your thing. 
Cranston from day one, he changed me, not from day one, but from being on that show. And here's how he changed me. One day we're doing a, 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 an episode where there's a huge crowd. I mean, hundreds of background extras. And um, in between takes, they would come up and ask him questions. Hey, so how did you get in the business? Or what do you, what do you think? And he was answering everybody's questions. Wow. And I like taking time with people and I, and I came to him and I said, I've never seen anybody do that. And he goes, I made myself a promise. If I was ever the star of the show of a show, I would not be an ass. And like from that day on, I was like, I have to live by a no asshole qual, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I have to be that guy. Like I never want to be that guy. Yeah. He's such a kind and giving and ridiculously talented guy. Yeah. Just, just a sweetheart of a human being. That's who I want to be. Yeah. I don't want to be somebody who's like, oh, he's, you know, he, his box office is good, but he's not fun to work with. Screw that. Yeah. I don't want to be around that ass all day. I want to be around somebody who is a pleasure and giving and understands how fortunate he is in life. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's, he's an amazing actor and just, wow. I just saw him on a hike. Yes, last week. Yeah. I seen him on a hike. Wow, the fact you just yeah. said that. We live in LA, man. You see everybody everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I just saw him pooping uh, in the bathroom stall two days. Yeah, of course. You live in LA. That's where people got to poop. People got to hike. <laughs> people got to hike and poop. Yeah. You would, yeah. Yeah. I saw Brian Cranston pooping on a hike uh, just a week ago. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a busy man. Yeah, so he got to He ain't got time to go to the bathroom. When you can, huh? Yeah, you got to poop when you can. Yep, there you go. I got yeah. you. I got yeah. you. Uh, what's one of your favorite kids shows that uh, you voice actor that you like man I love this show oh a lot of them like even right now seriously like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur oh, yeah. really? I, I don't know if you've seen it I like have. the art oh, style is amazing oh, yeah. Raphael Sadiq does the music in it Lawrence yeah. Fishburne produces it oh. it's great it's a very different style than any other kids yeah. cartoon that you're gonna see around that and um, back, back a while ago was um, Doc McSuffins uh, that was great because it was this little black chick who was a nurse uh, or doctor rather to stuffed animals, and so yeah, I love it was that. great. Like, like, positive spin to little black girls. Absolutely, yeah. doctor too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's cool. and the mom was a doctor on the show, and the dad was a stay-at-home dad, like working out in the garden. I love how it just like families are what families are, you right. know. Right. So it was, it was great. That, th so those are some of my favorite favorite kids stuff. You know? Okay. Okay. So I asked you one last question. Yeah. So. Yeah. Last I wish you said, I'm going to ask you one last question. Can I ask you 30 more? Well, that would have been great. That would be a great way. <laughs> well, you, you, you cut me off. I'm going to say, can I ask you a couple more questions? After oh, okay. Ask, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. I love cutting you yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> In traffic, I don't care where it is. If I have the opportunity to cut you off, I'm going to take that opportunity. <laughs> I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. In LA. I live in L.A. I live in L.A. I poop and I hike and I cut yeah. you off. <laughs> These are the things I do. And you're good, at, you're good at it, let me tell you. So what, do you, what would you want to say to anybody that's aspiring to be a voice actor, a comedian, um, an actor? What, what would you say to them? Could you I have to say I've said this before and I believe it. Nike has the best ad in the world which is just do it. And I know it sounds simplified, but it's true. Just yeah. do it. Every day, create something. Just keep pushing for it. I'm not a guy who sets goals and have dreams. My goal is to enjoy what I'm doing in life. I'm not a goal-oriented, oh, man, when I'm 35, I want to do this. And then when I'm 40, I want to have this. And I envision myself. No, what I do envision myself is doing what I enjoy. And that's what I push for every day. And if you want to be a famous podcaster or a, a race car driver or a voice actor or an on-camera actor, do it. Don't talk about doing it. Do it. Even if you do it in little chunks, do it. Make shorts if that's what you want to do. Do it. Seriously, just get out there and try it. You will never know until you try them. Beautiful. And don't be afraid to fail. Beautiful. I can care less about failing. I fail more than I succeed. If you're going to audition, you're not, there's a lot of stuff on this table and I've done a lot more, but I've auditioned for way more than that. I'm yeah. not concerned about the crap that I don't have. Don't worry about failing. 
Who cares? Yeah. Nobody cares. And a lot of times out of failure come some amazing things. The guy, a, a friend of mine is a guy who does the voice of Homer Simpson. The voice he was trying to do for Homer Simpson was this actor named Walter Matthau. Right. But he's a, this guy, Dan, is a shitty impersonator. What came out was the voice that's now Homer Simpson. Wow. That's not what he was trying to do. He failed at wow. doing his Walter Matthau, but he created an iconic sound from a failure. That's how you fail up. That's, that's how you, yeah. Just, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about failure and just freaking do it, man. That's it. Beautiful. And don't listen to everybody. <laughs> yeah, that is. Don't. Man, I say man, that man, all the time. Yeah. I'm gonna Nike that yeah. shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do yeah. it. Just whatever. But man. don't, I know you're talking shoe references. But don't Donald Trump it with those gold ass oh, shoes. Yeah, no, don't, don't do, do that, that shit. Don't do that. Shoes, kid. Nah. Yeah. yeah, that's when Nike should have said, Mr. Trump, don't do that bullshit. Yeah, no, nah, nah. go, go ahead and keep them to yourself. Go ahead. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Look like they came straight from Payless. Yeah, don't do your don't Googles, do kids. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Man, this has <laughs> been great. Oh, my God. Right, right, man. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Uh, thank really you, guys. Yeah. This, man. Oh, yeah. Man. Yes. Common Conroe, thank you guys for having us. Once again, thank you. Matter of fact, thank you, Jeremy, for being a great host, brother. Wait, what do you mean, homie? Man, I'm thanking you. I'm giving you your flowers. You're, you're, you're good at what you do. Yeah, no problem. Accept love. Accept that mess. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> heal, not me. <laughs> this is about all of us, friends. Yeah. This is about all of us. Yeah, it is. Yeah, man. Man. <laughs> I feel like a Muppet right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, Gary, thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fusion fam, I'm Chad. I'm Jeremy. And this is. Who is I? Who, is... Who I is? <laughs> Who I is? Oh! Gary Anthony Williams. Gary Anthony Williams, the voice of Unsung. If you don't watch that show, Unsung. Watch it. Some nights on some network, I don't. I don't know what network we're on or what nights, but watch it. Watch that mess. Yeah. No, it's not a mess, oh. you son of a... Ooh, if I, I'm going to take my shoes off and shinjitsu the hell out of you. Can <laughs> <laughs> I protect guard machines? Oh, Thank you, guys. Seriously. Thank you, Thank you, Pleasure. Oh, man, this has been great. I'm Chad. I'm, that's Jeremy. Yep. And it's Fusion and High, and we're out this thing. Ah, thank you so much, man. Thank you this so much. <laughs> oh my God.